Hey everyone, hi, it's Rita <laughs> and Teddy Bear um, here from Miss Rita to the Rescue for our cricket chat. I hope I can get some people on this morning. I've been absent for a couple of days and I apologize for that, but I had some, well, still working on some issues with my car. Good morning. Good morning, David. Hi, Christy. Good morning. Oh, good. I'm so glad that I've got some friends on this morning. I hope you're all well. Hi, Shelly. Hello. Good morning. Hi, Emmy. Yeah, so I'm sorry um, that I missed date night. It wasn't, I wasn't feeling ill or anything. I just got so overwhelmed with some things. I, um, I might have mentioned, I think I mentioned that our, um, my nephew by marriage, uh, passed away last week. And so there was a lot of, you know, c communicating with everyone about the plans and everything. And then my lease is ending on my car and I absolutely hate buying cars or leasing cars. It's just, it's so confusing to me. I am fine. Thank you so much, Serena, for asking. So, yeah, it just became Friday, sort of melded into Saturday. And I was like, oh, goodness, I'm running out of time here. And uh, I wanted to do that question and answer with also and do this adorable mermaid box. I uh, thank you, Penny. So I hope you're all well, and I do apologize. And we're gonna make up for that question and answer, um, and we're gonna be working on this box. And then also I have some giveaways to do this week. So I think I'll do them this week um, during the week to sort of make up for last Saturday. So watching during the day um, in the morning is a good thing if you can make it too. So hey everyone. Um, so I'll just jump right in while you guys say hello to each other. Hi Wanda. Uh, you know Serena let me just can I just say that buying a car is the worst thing in the whole world. I would rather <laughs> I'd rather do anything than buy a car. Um, just, ugh, you know, I, I've never thought of a car as like a status symbol or anything like that. So for me, it's just transportation. And I don't care about all that. You know, they ask me, well, what features do you want? And I'm like, I don't know, air conditioning. <laughs> and uh, apparently air conditioning comes standard in every car now. But that's me. I mean, I just don't. It's, it's, that's the only thing I could think of that I wanted so special. And they're like, what about this? What about this? What about, oh, I don't know. Um, <laughs> sometimes I think maybe I shouldn't even have a car, but whatever. Um, okay. So today we're going to be working on this box and it is a, um, I call it multimedia or mixed media because I used, hi Maria. Hi Christy. Yeah. Um, so I, 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 I have this great paper, this paper here, it's actually craft board and, um, I love little boxes. I've always loved little boxes cause I put things in them. Like for instance, I've had this, let me just show you this one. I've had this box. This is the one that I was originally going to show you with this paper, but I couldn't find this paper. But look, I put my little weeding tools in there. Um, and I made this with corrugated cardboard. And then, um, then this is a patterned paper. And this is actually a cardboard. <laughs> That's exactly right, Maria. I think women, whoops, I don't like to generalize, but I do think that women put less value on their cards. Cars, like, they just want something reliable to get them from one place to the other. And that men, generally speaking, like, you know, all the different whatever um, about buying a car. Hi, Susan. Yeah, so this is fun because it's got um, a lot of different elements. So this one here that I did this morning has this holographic foil paper that I'm going to show you. That's from Cricut. And then this patterned paper. And then it's got corrugated cardboard. That's from Cricut. And then this shiny gold stuff I decided to do to match this paper. Um, and that comes from... Uh, from 
uh, Michaels. And the thing that's cool about this box is I'm going to show you how to use the scoring wheel, the double scoring wheel, because of this paper. Um, this it's really craft board, so I'm going to show you. Um, but I also want to show you about this particular design because this is a Cricut, and I'm going to give you the uh, the design, the you know design space file for this. But it comes from this design, which is actually it was set up as a dimensional uh, art. I don't know, artwork or dimensional artwork. And um, I want to show you because I'm going to ungroup this and show you how many how many layers are here. So there you've got your outside layer. Um, no, you don't, Emmy. Emmy's asking if you have to use a deep cut blade to cut the craft board. And no, you don't. Um, you can use a regular blade. But um, if you have a maker and you have the scoring wheel and don't know what to use that double scoring wheel for, I'm going to show you because it, it creates a, um, a really kind of a neat way to do the sides of the corners that doesn't crack. However, if you have an explorer, you can use your scoring stylus for sure on this project. It's not you know, mandatory that you have a maker. I'm not saying go out and buy yourself a maker, but I just want to show you what's available um, and why, why those things are available. So this image comes from something called a dimensional scene. Um, and dimensional scenes are actually, there's quite a few of them. So let me just show you. So I'm just peeling back these, this, this is one layer, um, two, that's the hair right? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I've actually done these um, nine, 10, 11. So it has 11 layers. And um, you can actually see over on the right hand side. So there is the whole layers all of these layers which these are beautiful have you seen those people are doing a lot of this mandalas with they're like uh progressive and you and you put them together they're usually all one color or just a couple of colors this is that same idea um and it would just stack or sometimes people um will put like uh what do you call them like our pop dots, but there it's more of a um you can't use the dot area, but you can use the like thin pieces um to give it dimension that's why it's called a dimensional scene so um I want to show you where to find these first of all, because there's more than just the mermaid there are some that are um oh I'm trying to think there's some that's Halloween, Valentine's Day. Um, there's some that are like just flowers and there's some that are uh, travel, which are really great. Yeah, and these are these are all in design space, guys. These are, if you're a, a design space um, subscriber, you're gonna, you can get these for free. So I wanna show you. Um, can anything that can be scored on the Explorer to be substituted? Can anything that can be scored on the Explorer be substituted? Are you saying substituted with the... Uh, I'm not sure I understand that question, Constance. Um, if you have an Explorer, any kind of Explorer, you can use the um, scoring stylus, right? Um, and this, and this is, will work fine, but the scoring wheel, which is designed for the maker, um, comes in a scoring, this is, these are my tools. Let me just show you. This is the scoring wheel that has the two here. See that? It has two little things and it creates like kind of like a divot between the two which causes the paper not to crack now it also has a one you know it's the two because it says two on here somewhere where did it say there it is there's the two let me see if it'll Whoa, come on 
It's, there it is. There's the two. And there's a one. And the only reason why we're using the two today um, and, is because we're going to use this special paper, this um, craft board. And we're going to talk about that in a second. So let's talk about where you find these images first, okay? <clears throat> okay. So when you go to Design Space and you come to the image search, you can um, search the word dimensional, but it doesn't return all the image that images that I am talking about. So I'll just show you what it does return. So I put in dimensional um, here. And it returns some of the images that are part of these dimensional images, but not our mermaid. And if you type in mermaid, it brings up all of these kind of mostly flat images. They're really cute, but they're mostly flat. And if you keep scrolling, keep scrolling, keep scrolling, you might be able to find, there it is, there's our mermaid. But let me show you an easier way to find them. So I'm in the search and I go to image sets, okay? Um, oh, okay, constants. Yeah, sure. You can you can change the paper out. Um, it's only we're only using that double scoring wheel because I'm using this paper, the craft uh, holographic craft paper. Oh, thank you for clarifying. Okay, so we're in image sets, and so if you type in the word dimensional here you will come up with 12 results. And these are all of the ones that I was talking about. So there's a nativity one that is gorgeous. If you like that, we can do that one uh, as we get closer to Christmas. It's a, a triptych, which means that it's three um, layers. And so you can make this with, you can make them together. And there's also a really beautiful card. But um, there's also this Halloween scene. There's this adorable teacup one. Um, these flowers. This is the one I was telling you about, the travel one that has, like, I think it has Paris. Yeah, it has Paris and Rome and London. Those are really cute. Um, but we're still scrolling down here and we come up with this dimensional scene. It's called Mermaid Tales. Okay. And it actually only consists of four of the dimensional scenes. Um, but in one of them is our mermaid, but these are the, these are basically the same idea. There's a, there's a sea on a rocky, uh, Seas. I'm sorry, there's a boat on a rocky seas or a ship. Um, there's a mermaid and there's this underwater octopus, which is really cool. Um, and then over here on the right-hand side is a card um, that's dimensional that I, I love too. It's really great to do. But I wanted to just kind of talk about this grouping because in addition to those dimensional scenes, you also get these drawing scenes, which, by the way, um, if you have a maker um, and you have a debossing machine, uh, I mean a debossing tool, you could do anything that's drawn can be switched to debossing, which is something that we could we could work on later on in the week because um, that's also another tool. It's actually a different tip. And people have asked about embossing versus debossing. Um, and also anything that's sort of drawn like this, these three can be um, etched. And of course they can be drawn. Okay, so we're working on these dimensional scenes. So let's pull in, oh, you know what? Let's pull in the octopus just for a different view, I guess. Um, and it comes in pretty small, but frankly, if you're going to do this completely, I would do it fairly big. It's just that, um, oh, she's going to get, Babs is going to get, um, a, a blade. Okay, go, Babs, that's fine. Um, so anyway, so if I, if it comes in pretty small like this, but I would definitely make it bigger and I'll tell you why. Look over here on the right hand side. Can you see this here? This is our cut. This is our dimensional scene. There's two, four, six, eight, 
10, 12 layers. And um, some of the layers are pretty, uh, pretty, this one's pretty easy to do, but some of the layers are pretty small as they get smaller and smaller, you see? And um, so when I was playing around with this image, and now I've done it where I just cut these images out like this, and they come out really beautiful. Um, the only thing is I probably would put it in a frame. I didn't put it in a frame last time and it got ruined. Um, but these images here um, actually have some things that are sticking out. See right here, they're sticking out. So putting in a frame, um, you would have to sort of lop off these pieces that stick out, which, you know, I don't know how you would want to do that, but to put it in a frame um, to make it really look three-dimensional, I, I think you'd have to lop off those pieces. Again, which I didn't do, um, but I'll show you what I did for the mermaid one, okay? Hey, Lisa, are you back home? Hi, April. Um, okay, so this is what they look like, and it is it is a bit of a challenge to do one of these um one of these files, you have to really be really careful about the choices that you make in paper. So I love these images, but I was wanting to make a box and I was wanting to use um, this stuff, which is craft board foil sampler, sampler holographic neon. Because I got this, as I remember when I got this when I went out to Cricut last last year and I was like oh what's this I love everything holographic let me just show you what this stuff is yeah a shadow box right but the thing about the shadow box Maria is there are parts of the image that sort of stick out so this is what's called holographic let me take out a piece this is called holographic neon craft board and it actually doesn't have a custom setting as far as craft board is concerned it's because look it's kind of like poster board craft board it's thick but it has this beautiful holographic kind of a, a covering and this particular box contains six different colors there's like pink orange green blue yellow and I think that's it pink yeah there's a blue. I've used up all the blue in my box. <laughs> I don't know. I must love that color blue. So anyway, there's this. And I thought, ooh, I want to make something. When I got this box, this pack, I was like, oh, I want to make something. It does not have a weight listed. Let me check. Nope. It just says 30 sheets, six of each color. And it does say here cut and score without cracking, tearing, or leaving white score marks. So, um, so of course I was like, challenge accepted. Then I was thinking, you know, I had gotten this corrugated cardboard set. I don't know. I don't know if they still have these, have this, but it was, it's basically, um, corrugated cardboard in pastel colors. And in addition to the, the cardboard, it had matching cardstock which is also pretty thick i would probably call this hunt uh, i don't know what the corrugated cardboard is but i think the craft board and this and this stuff is probably about a hundred pounds um it's definitely thicker than our card stock okay and we're going to do this uh box and then i decided as i was looking at this I was I was saying okay these are all these are all great these images this image but I'm going to be cutting it pretty small and I don't know if I want all of these layers see all these layers this is these are the three I chose but these are all the layers that came with it and I was like uh I don't know if I want to use all of them so I started I ungrouped it let me just get um Let's just hide this. So I ungrouped it and started to peel away the layers and figured which ones were essential. So I, I knew it needed a backdrop, which is that's what I was going to use for the corrugated cardstock. 
Yes, it will, Wanda. It's under custom, but yes, it will. Wanda's asking if the corrugated cardstock will cut on the Explore. Yes. So, so when I was peeling off these layers, I thought, okay, I need definitely need the background, which is what I did with the corrugated. And I need to have the mermaid, of course. And then I needed to have the mermaid's hair. So I thought, I want to do these separate. So I came up with out of those 11, <laughs> those 11 layers, I figured, you know, these three seemed essential to me. This would be the one that I would do for her hair. Um, and then this one would be the overlay piece that would be her body. Now, obviously, I could be much more um, detailed, okay? Um, but I thought this this is taking that dimensional scene and giving it some dimension, but not all the dimension that it was originally designed for. So, so just know that I didn't, um, this one particular image is part of that bigger set of images that I have removed, peeled away. And that's, what's going to be on the top of our box. Okay. And then I thought, so the top, I thought, um, this is actually the box top and this is the box. It's two pieces. So I figured I would do the, the box bottom in that holographic craft. This is what it looks like. Um, and this is what it looks like on the bottom. It's pretty easy to put together. And I'm trying to think if it would cut. It would not score, obviously, on the joy. But it would definitely cut on the joy, I think. Well, let me check. You may have to um, separate these images and measure them. One, two, three, four. You might have to make them a little smaller. Or if you like this particular size, what I would suggest is actually lopping off the inside. I like the ins I like that they have this inside part um, because of where the edge is here. But that inside makes it kind of long. Uh, see that? So this inside, it's actually a little flap and you put the glue there and then you put it inside like that. That's how you do that. And it gives you this nice edge. Okay. And then the top goes on like this. So let's cut this out with our special, um, our special paper so it can demystify it okay um so i'm going to let's see i have these pieces here well let's let's um put these ones aside for now okay we're gonna group them and we're gonna hide them let's just cut these things okay so we're gonna make it and it comes up with three um, sheets. Now, one of the things I noticed is that it's sort of going to waste a lot of paper here um, because it has each piece on a separate sheet, and I don't want to waste that much paper. Thank you, Susan. You're so sweet. Um, and then, of course, there's the top. So, um, so that's going to be a separate, uh, separate material. It's actually some cardstock that I found from a Michaels group of. Um, of cardstock. So, so I want to go and I want to put these two pieces of, um, whoops, <laughs> these two pieces of the box on the same sheet so I don't waste any paper. And we're going to use our little trick, which is um, select one on one mat. You're going to select the image. You're going to go to this triple dot here and we're going to choose move object okay so we choose move object and up comes all of our mats um and we have a choice we can add it to a new mat but in this case we want to add it to the mat where the first piece is okay um and you notice that this is the mat this middle one is the mat that we already are moving it from so it's shaded out you can't move it to the same mat. So um, it's it's deciding, do we want to put it on this mat or this mat? We want to put it on this mat. <clears throat> now you notice it comes in and the machine for once is right because look, I'm moving this over. It comes in on top of that other thing and you move it over and oops, it would cut off part of the 
image, right? So this is where moving an image around is really good to know about. So we're going to click on this image, the one that we brought in, and we're actually going to turn, flip it upside down using this circle thing right here. Okay, and we just do this circle thing and we flip it around and lo and behold, all of a sudden, your images, both of them, will cut and they won't interfere with each other. Okay, so that's what you'd use that circle for. Now, let me just say this. If you were going to be cutting this on patterned paper, you probably wouldn't want to use this technique, um, depending. Um, it is, it's upside down. If It depends on the way, it's sort of like sewing, depends on the way that the pattern is set out on your paper. But in this case, we're using a solid color paper. We're using that craft board. So we can move it around, okay? Um, and so we don't need to make any changes to that to the cover. So let's hit continue. And you'll see, <clears throat> this is where we set up the base material. This is what's different if you have an explore versus having a maker, okay? An explore automatically makes you choose the material all the time. With a maker, you have that scoring, I'm sorry, that, that turning wheel and you choose uh, cardstock, cardstock plus, um, vi vinyl, vinyl plus, iron on, iron on plus, right? And then you can turn your wheel all the way to custom and you'll get this. Um, you'll, this is what you get. So just in case you have an explorer and you're like, I'm not seeing this, switch your wheel, turn your wheel all the way to custom and you will see this, okay? So what we decided to do was use a patterned cardstock for the top. We're going to use this nice gold foil one. And then we're going to use our holographic craft board in this greeny blue color. Okay. So I do not have that set as a favorite because I want to show you where it is. It is considered craft board above all else but you'll notice here under craft board there's no choice like what do I do it's holographic um so do I need to find a holographic or what you know so a lot of times when you're cutting things like vinyl it's important that you know that it's holographic because vinyl holographic vinyl is slightly different and cuts different but in this case craft board is craft board it doesn't matter what the finish is and there's craft board that's just plain um and there's craft board that has a finish on it and in this case craft board has a finish on is what we're using so we're going to choose that one okay now I know the cover is going to be in a different um, thing we're going to change the material setting um, for that okay but what you'll see now I have the maker <clears throat> if you don't have the maker this isn't going to show up for you but if you do have the maker it says um, that I need the double scoring wheel and the reason why I need the double scoring wheel is because of the finish and the thickness of the um of the paper because that double scoring wheel which is this again see how it has two little wheels and it's not sharp okay it's just a scoring wheel but the pressure of the machine is going to make like a divot in your paper and that's good for things like glitter uh, cardstock, shimmer, anything that's like fancy thing, but also thick, thick things. It will create like a divot, make it much easier to fold at the scoring. Now to remove, if you want to, if you have a maker and you want to use a scoring wheel, if you have, for, for instance, the O1 and the O2, let me just get my O1. So here's the O1. See, it has only one. Let's see if it, there we go. It only has one little wheel, and this one has two little wheels. So to change anything from the adaptive system, you just press on this little plunger, and you pull the tip off. 
like this and then you put whatever tip so if you were going to use the debossing tip here's the debossing tip you just put it on there so you really only need one of these base things and then you put the tip on so this is the deboss tip so i can show you it kind of looks it's not really quite a divot and let me show you this one this is the etching look at how sharp that is that's the etching one and then we also have the perforated um, so Marie is asking, when I'm making cards, is it better to use the single or the double wheel? It depends on the card, the the uh, material you're you're scoring, Maria. If you're going to score like um, glitter, definitely use a double. If you're going to score regular cardstock, singles fine. Okay, this one is not the perfect. Perforate. Yes, perforation. See how it is? It cuts just ever so uh, separately, just little pieces. And then the last one is the wavy. And I'll be honest, I have not found terrible, like lots of wonderful uses for the wavy yet. I really haven't given it its time. So I will spend some time on that because I think it probably could be fun. But anyway, so here is a double and I'm just pressing this. Um, I also will tell you that there are two tips that, um, two pieces that you can't switch out the tips for, and they are the rotary blade and the knife blade. Um, those are designed so that, let me show you what they look like. They don't have a um, plunger type of thing. This one, this is a rotary blade. And you see it does not have the plunger. And this is very sharp. I don't want to touch it like I do the scoring wheel. But it doesn't have the plunger, so you cannot take this piece out. And that's because of this mechanism here. Okay? Let me see if I can find my knife blade. Oh, I think I got two rotary blades. Okay, I do. And this is the knife blade. Also does not have the plunger. So if you want the knife blade or the rotary blade, rotary blade is great for fabric. Knife blade is great for thick material such as chipboard and basswood. Okay, and not even leather. Actually, leather cuts with the regular... Um, with a regular cut, I believe. I'm thinking, yeah. Okay, so this we're back to our single and double scoring. So I'm gonna put in O2. Now, if you have an explorer, it's going to tell you to put in the scoring stylus. Remember the scoring stylus goes um goes to the left clamp, but the scoring wheel goes to the right clamp. So I'm going to move you over to my machine. And so you can see right now, Dorothy, the deep and fine point blades are the only ones for the explore with the exception of pens and the scoring stylus. Um, I don't know if that will change, but for right now, you can just only swap out this, which is your regular housing with the deep, where is my deep cut? Here it is. The deep is the black one. And actually, can I just mention that um, your deep and your regular are actually the, the same. I believe they're the same. Let me just check. Well, the deep one is actually a little bit smaller. Yeah, it is. Okay, I very rarely use the deep cut blade. Um, but oh, so we're, we're going to take out our regular housing and blade. And by the way, if you've never done it before, this is how you take out the blade. And it's the same thing for the joy. You press on the plunger. It has kind of a magnetic hold on it. And you pull it out. And then you put it back in by pressing on the plunger again. And there's your blade. You can do um, a little bit of sharpening of this blade with a piece of foil. And I can show you that next time. I just don't have my foil here. But you can sharpen it. Um, but eventually you're going to have to replace blades. I don't do it that often. And I cut every single day. So that tells you... Um, that tells you a lot. So, okay, so here's my double scoring wheel, right? No, you don't need the deep cut blade all that much, Anna. So don't, 
rush out to buy it. Um, it's really, it's, it's not something you have to use a lot. I think that's handled with the custom setting. Um, and so the deep cut blade is for very, very specific projects. We can talk about that in a different episode. Okay. So, all right. So here's my, my, um, scoring wheel and the way it goes in the maker is it has these little teeth. See those teeth? See that? The teeth meet the teeth in the back here, and it so you kind of it's like a clockworks that you have to hold it in place, and then you close that clamp. If you have an explore, you can put your in in the A clamp. You can put your um, stylus in there, but in this case, and you can leave your stylus in. By the way, it's not gonna you know, do anything because it only will engage if it needs to. Okay. He did. Maria's husband sharpened her blades with a, a knife sharpener and it's like getting a new blade. Yeah. Right, Dorothy. So, so if you like deep cut blade, don't run out unless you're going to do a lot of chipboard work, a lot of chipboard, which is that very, very thick cardboard. Right. David's saying he um, has been crafting with a Cricut for five years and he doesn't think he's ever used the deep cut blade. I don't use it all that much either. Okay, so here's our paper or our craft board on this mat. So we're going to put it in. And first, remember, we always do scoring. The machine always does scoring before cutting. So let's get it going so you can see how it scores. Um, so in this case, we're going to have to take out after the scoring is done, we have to take it out the scoring wheel, and then we have to put our blade back. If you have an explore, you can do scoring with the stylus, and then it goes right into cutting. Um, and so you don't have to worry about switching out your materials. The only difference is that the clamp a is not designed to have that pressure. Oh, okay. So there you go. Um, okay. So it's done my scoring <laughs> and here I wasn't paying attention and I'm thinking, why did it go so quickly? And actually it went so quickly because, um, I cut the top or I scored the top. So I need to, let's see, we're going to turn this over and I'm going to switch the page. I'm going to do the bottom. It doesn't matter that the scoring, um, the scoring wheel already did the scoring over there because it's not a cut, okay? So I made a boo-boo so you guys can know. <laughs> I didn't have my cut on the box bottom. So let's get it going. And then I'm going to get my mat for the top. This is what we're going to do for the top. And this is cardstock. So I'm going to change my setting um, for the cardstock and I'm also going to change my um, scoring wheel from the 02 to the 01. I'm going to show you how to do that in a second. I'm going to move you back to my screen, okay? Um, oh, Shelly, oh my gosh, I'm, I, I've, I um, experienced that too. She she recently had an order and she got 10 emails and probably you had 10 items in your order, right? I had that happen. I had seven items in my order. This was last week and I got seven emails saying that they were um, in the process of being uh, sent and, and, you know, packaging, right? Um, so let's go ahead and we have to, now it's done scoring. We're going to put back the cutting part. Make sure when you put it back that this neck here rests at the top of the clamp. You don't want it to be up here or won't cut. Okay. So see how it's down there. All right. And now it's going to do the cutting. And then I'm going to take you back to the screen so you can see um, what what it's going to look like. So let's, yeah. So I think that they made, you remember when they had, were having some problems and everything. Um, it, it's actually, their shipping is like one to two weeks. It's back to normal. Um, but 
I think they made some some minor um, minor corrections. I have to report that because uh, I I noticed it yesterday too. Uh, I mean last week too. So I think it's just they're being overly cautious to tell people that things are shipping because now they ship. They used to ship everything in one box and they'd wait until everything was available. Right now they're shipping in multiple. Yeah. Oh, it took a few days, Shelly? Oh, that's awesome. Okay, so we're finishing up the cutting of the box bottom, and we're going to be doing the box top, but I wanna change the material setting on this, okay? So I wanna show you what that is all about. So let's finish this up. Yeah, Anna, it was. And I think that was a distribution prom problem throughout the country. Um, but then also, I think it was a learning, uh, a learning curve for Cricut. They had not expected that when COVID happened, everybody wanted to stay home and craft. And um, so they got overwhelmed, you know. So, okay, so here's our box bottom. It's all scored and cut out. So we want to change our um, top to be this cardstock. So let me show you how to do that. I have to change the base material from craft board to um, medium cardstock. And you can do this. You don't have to cut all the same material all at once. You can change it all out. So, um, so you just click on base material. And in this case, I'm going to do medium cardstock because that's what I have in there. And you'll notice because I have the maker, it's telling me to put in the single scoring wheel. So now I have my double and I'm going to get my tip for my single right here. I'm going to take off the double, put in the single, or put the tip on the single. See how it's kind of like a, a square oval? I don't know how you would call that. All right, so there's my, my single wheel, and I'm going to put that in my machine. Let me bring you over again. We're moving a lot today. Okay, so here's my... my um, single scoring wheel i'm lining up those teeth i'm closing the clamp and then i'm putting in my paper and i hit that flashing button to load it and then i hit you can't see that part but i hit the the flashing c um nothing much would happen um, Dorothy's asking, what if you use the double instead of the single? Um, nothing much would happen, but I wanted to show you how in a single, um, cut, how you would change things out. Um, and I, I think that the single works just as well, but I wanted to show you double and single too. Um, so, and Deborah's asking, the Air 2 has two spots for blade pens and scoring tool. How does the machine know which the housing, um, which houses the blade. It just knows, I guess. <laughs> how does it know? Um, I'm not really sure how it knows, but it, it does know. Um, with the Explore for right, um, let me just put this in there. With the Explore, um, it knows that pens only go in clamp A. Pens and the stylus go into clamp A. And then everything else goes in clamp B. And everything else being right now, there's only the regular um, cut and then there's the deep cut blade. So you don't really have to actually swap out your blade all that much with the Explore. Now that might change in the future. I don't know. But for right now, um, clamp B, which is this one, is the um, only thing, the only thing that goes in there is your housing and with the blade. So here is our single, and I'll just show you. Now you could use um, the scoring, just like I mentioned, um, but this is the single. And watch when I fold it. It's the same way as with the um, stylus, but it's a little deeper. Now let me show you the... Um, box. Okay, so there's the double for the box. See how it's double? It creates like a little divot, and then when you fold it, it doesn't crease or crack. Let me see if I can get close. Yeah. 
right? So you just fold it at all those places, no cracking. You actually could hear it cracking before when you use the scoring stylus. So, you know, I wouldn't run out and buy yourself a maker if, um, if you do a lot of scoring either, but it's something to aspire to if you are a scoring person. Um, and you like to do like a lot of boxes, a lot of three dimensional things. All right. So let's, I already cut out the, um, the mermaid. I'm not sure if we're going to, let's see, what time is it? Mm, we might not have time to cut out the mermaid, but actually I might want to show you that. So, um, if you don't mind hanging tight with me for a few more minutes, I can show you how to do the mermaid. So we've finished the, um, the box. And we're going to pull up the mermaid. And again, it's, uh, ungroup it. It's these three pieces. And I decided I wanted this to be the corrugated. And I wanted this to be, um, the hair. So I wanted it to make it golden. And then I wanted this to be, um, the regular, just plain card stock. So when you go to make it, you'll see it comes up in three, three cuts here. Um, and personally, you know how we've put, because it's so small, um, we've put things all on one mat. I probably wouldn't do that because I have three different materials, okay? So let's go ahead and go to the cutting and choosing our material. So if I want to look at which, um, which mat I'm working on, you know, you can always go to edit and it will show you. Okay, so this one here is the one for the hair. So this one's going to be the gold. And this one here is the one for the um, solid cardstock. And then this one is going to be the corrugated because it's just a, a square. So let's start working with the corrugated just so you can see that. And we're going to go to browse all materials. <clears throat> and corrugated cardboard's actually at the top. So let's choose that. And I'm going to just put that in. <clears throat> Here's my corrugated cardboard. I don't think I need to show you how it cuts. It just cuts. It's a regular, uses a regular fine point blade. Don't have to worry about swapping out <clears throat> for deep, for the deep cut. And then once that's cut out, we can switch the material back to regular card stock and it can cut it out. Now the, um, the hair, which is gold, um, is actually paper that I got from Michael's. Um, it's part of their recollections uh, process or what do you call it? Recollections brand. Um, it's gold paper and it's thinner than the um, than the paper that we normally use. Let me just switch it. It is thinner. I cut it on the medium, but um, that's just me. I don't know. It seems to cut fine. Probably could be on a thinner setting, but medium works. So I'm going to cut those out. And then we're going to put this together. So here's my corrugated cardboard cut out. And we have the other pieces cut out. Okay, that didn't take very long. Okay, so let me just put my tools away and show you how this goes together, okay? So here are our pieces. We've got, I'm gonna move you a little bit, okay? Move you down here. Uh, uh, uh. Okay. And I'm gonna move this a little tiny bit. Okay, so here are our two pieces for the box bottom. This is our top, and these are our three pieces for the for the um, on top, the embellishment on top. So these are the two pieces, and they have to be um, scored at all the score lines. So there's the bottom here. This, there's one side and then also on these there is a score at the end here 
this is for the inside of the box. And again, you don't have to do it this way, but it does look nice. Um, and you can actually cut it off if you wanted to. Okay, so we're lining up the two pieces already all scored. And we're going to take this tab and hold it to right near to the edge there. We're going to put some glue on it. Now this paper needs a little extra glue because it's got a kind of a shiny finish on it. And the one thing I've learned with this particular design, and the box design, by the way, just comes from Cricut, um, and I just pulled it from, from Design Space. And again, I'll give you the whole uh, file so you can see what I'm talking about. So here I am just lining up the this one edge. I'm not going to do both edges because I'll tell you why. Because I want the sides... Just want to make sure that that's connected. I want to pull in the sides, but I don't want to do all four of the sides because I need to close up the box, right? So I'm not going to do this side or the inside, I should say. And I'm going to, um, you can do it either way. You can put a little bit glue here, but um, I think the way that the original designer wanted you to do it was you just put the glue on the tab and fold it like this and hold it down so the glue takes. I suppose you could put a little bit of glue here. I didn't ever think of that. But I'm just going to do um, the three inside edges. Just like that. And I do have to hold it because it's so thick. <laughs> um, it's going to take a little while to, to attach <clears throat> for that glue to catch, okay? So I got my three sides, but not this one because we still have to do this. All right. Okay, these two are done. This one needs a, just a couple more seconds. And don't worry, the glue will dry eventually, you know. So then you're gonna fold it in half and we're gonna put glue on this tab to create our box, see? But we still have this edge, we'll deal with that in a second. So then we're gonna do the flap. Do it on a flat surface and fold it instead of trying to do it like this because then your box will be wobbly and you don't want a wobbly box. You want it perfectly square or perfectly squared off, I guess. All right, we're just holding that for a few extra seconds because of we're using that paper that's a little bit thicker and also it's got that special, see that? That's what your edge is looking like. Okay, it might not stay, but okay, so now we've got our fourth wall and or the fourth inside edge and we can just put some glue here you can also do it here if you want i guess and we're going to put it inside and you can, this is why we didn't close up the bottom yet so we can hold it and make sure well see this i should have let this dry a little bit longer there we go okay and there's our fourth wall Again, this will be different if you use different paper. So there is our top of the box. And I'm just gonna, I'm, I know I'm rushing. You won't, you won't rush, of course. Um, so this is how the box bottom goes. It This part here that has like the U shape goes in first. And then these just tab in, no glue necessary. And then the last piece, which is, looks like kind of like a tab, goes, bends a little bit and goes in here. And that's how you do the bottom. So there's our box. And if you wanted to, I suppose you could cut a piece and put it on the bottom, maybe of this. this. That wouldn't be a difficult thing to achieve. Now let's do the uh, top. So the top has four score lines and then also has these little tabs here 
okay? So we're going to fold in and we're gonna put glue just on these little tiny tabs. And best to work on a flat surface, you know? And I put the tabs on the inside. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I think it, it looks a lot better to put the tabs on the inside. Um, I don't know. I think, I suppose it's a personal choice. So I usually do one side to make sure that I'm doing it act absolutely lined up with the other side. Does that make sense? And then here are tabs on this side, put a little bit of glue and then hold it. And when you're working on a flat surface, you can make sure that it's, it's flat like the whole surface area is flat. That's how you know that it's um, that it's squared off correctly. So there's our box top. You can stop there if you wanted to. Of course, you can stop there. But, of course, you know me, gilding the lily. I just want to put, I'm afraid it's going to open up because I didn't give it enough time. So there's our box. And here are our pieces for the top. So like I said, I have this corrugated cardboard square. Then I have this one, this golden piece that's going to have her hair. Now you notice that when I first did this, I'm like, what happened? Why is it cut? That's so that the hair can be on top because it's going to be the middle piece. See that? And then this piece goes on here and I'm going to poke out her hair like this so that the hair is on top. It doesn't get hidden by that other piece, okay? So now when you're working with gold foil, you gotta be really careful with your glue because even the little dot of glue will show like extra dot. And we're also making sure not to not to put it here on the, on the edge of her hair, but you wanna put it all, everywhere else. And these pieces are kind of delicate so you do need to be very careful with your glue. And I'm gonna put it all over the edges. Might have put a little too much on, but I'm gonna make sure I don't have any glue on my fingers and um, because I don't want it to come off on my mermaid, the gold part, okay? So I'm gonna line it up on top of the corrugated cardboard. This part again is up. That's okay. Put this down. I didn't put glue on the hair part. I have glue all over my fingers. I apologize. And there we go. And then we take this piece. See how that's going to lay over there? And we just put glue on all of those areas, including this adorable fin. And the little hands, look at how tiny that hand is. That's why, I mean, when you're going to cut this out, if you're going to just do the dimensional scene, that you do need to make it bigger. Because look at how tiny that hand is. So cute. All right. So I'm going to put this on top. I'm going to untuck the hair from behind there. All right. Here we go. Make sure it's lined up so I can only see the hair being gold. I did get a little bit of glue. You'll do a better job than I will. Um, but I did get a little bit of glue on there. And even with our fancy glue, um, it will be hard to cut out. You can probably try wetting it a little bit. And um, so there is our embellishment for the top. And then we take our, I think we'll put it this way. Now you could use those pop dot, dots if you wanted to um, here so this would stick up, but I haven't done that for this project. And then we put a little bit of glue on the embellishment and hold it on really good. Now you could have po probably done this before you assemble the box. It's really a personal preference. That's going to drive me crazy, that little bit of glue that got on there. And there is our mermaid. And this, these are just 
a couple of slight variations. I, I don't know if this is a variation. No, this is another variation that I did last year. Um, and again, it's perfect for holding little things that you have hanging around on your desk, whether it's push pins or um, blades or whatever. You can put that in there or it's great for a little girl for her room or whatever. You can make it bigger, of course. You can make it smaller, of course. But I will give you when I'm when I'm done with this, this one I did with the gold. This one I did with this cute um, foil paper. I couldn't find that foil paper again. So that is my corrugated or the mixed media mermaid box thank you for all the love that you're sending i'm so glad that you like it and i hope that you've learned something today um and we have uh we have gone over and i will be here most of the week i'm not sure about thursday because i um I have the funeral, but it's later in the morning. So um, thank you so much for coming today. And thanks for for um, remembering to come back, even though I wasn't here Friday and Saturday. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And um, feel free to share this so you know other people can learn how to use these different techniques. And I'll see you all again tomorrow. Thanks. Have a great day, everyone. Oh, yay.